Hey guys, so today I'm talking all about Neutrogena sunscreen. There are 52 Neutrogena sunscreen options to choose from right now. Yes, 52, that is super overwhelming. Why exactly are there so many options? I went through every single one of the 52 options and reviewed the ingredients. I've personally tested a large majority of these over the years and then again recently in my research for this topic. And now I'm here to decode all of the Neutrogena sunscreen options in this video. Let me tell you, of these 52 sunscreen options, there are really only a small number that I actually recommend and personally use. And the rest, I do not recommend. And I will tell you all about it. So watch this video all the way through and you will easily understand how to sort through these options and ultimately, land on a product that's right for you and your family. Now, many of the things that I will talk about and teach you about in this video today can relate to other sunscreen brands as well. So what you learn here today will also be able to help you pick out the best sunscreens from other competing brands. But why should you listen to me on this topic? I'm a board certified dermatologist and this is my lane. I have been researching sunscreens and I talk about them to my patients every single day. I believe sunscreen is an important part of our daily skincare routine, so we need to find one that we like and that we trust and will use consistently. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Marin Locke, better known here on YouTube as the Budget Dermatologist, where I show you how to transform your skin on a budget. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos. Give them a thumbs up if you like them. And if you want even more content from me, follow me along on some of my other social media accounts that I always link below, so come say hi. So Neutrogena is one of the most well-known and long-standing brands in the skincare industry, specifically for sunscreen products. I love this brand because it's affordable and widely available. I believe that quality skincare products, especially sunscreens, should be accessible for all. With that said, Neutrogena has way too many sunscreen options. When looking at their website right now, you will see 52 unique sunscreen options to choose from. So how will the average consumer who hops on their website or stops by the drugstore to grab some sunscreen on the way to the beach know which one to choose? Which one is good for the face? Which one is good for the body? Which one should you use on your baby or child? And which one should you wear with makeup? And which one should you wear to the beach or swimming? Or does it even matter? Is it all just marketing on the packaging? As a practicing dermatologist, I get asked these questions all the time. And patients ask me for my personal recommendations of brands as well as specific products within those brands. So I really spend a lot of time on this topic. And after reviewing all 52 sunscreens on the Neutrogena website, here is my breakdown of the hits and the misses for you. But first, the basics. Neutrogena offers sunscreen in three main categories. You have lotions, sprays, and sunscreen sticks. You will have the most options to choose from in lotions, then sprays, and the least amount of options in sticks. So this choice really comes down to user preference. As a general rule, myself and most dermatologists recommend lotions as these tend to be more effective. Sticks can also be effective if applied in an appropriate quantity. And sprays are generally the least effective as coverage tends to be much less than recommended. So deciding on this category is one of the first steps in selecting your sunscreen. The other big choice that you have to make is choosing between a chemical versus a mineral sunscreen. Now, I'm not going to get too in depth about the formulation of sunscreens in this video, but instead I'll just tell you a few key points about chemical versus mineral sunscreens, just enough info so that you can choose which one you prefer and ultimately you will understand my final recommendations. Okay, so chemical sunscreens use chemicals to protect your skin from the sun. They work by absorbing the UV radiation in the harmful spectrum and they convert it to low energy heat, which dissipates and prevents sun damage. Compare this to mineral sunscreens, which use minerals to protect you from the sun. Now the mineral sunscreens sit on top of the skin and reflect the sunlight off rather than absorbing it. You can tell which type of sunscreen it is by flipping it over and looking at the back on the ingredients label under active ingredients. You will see either chemicals or minerals 
or a combination of both listed here. So there are six chemicals commonly used in sunscreens in the United States. Examples of these include oxybenzone and avobenzone, which are really commonly used in our sunscreens. And there are two mineral blockers that are available in the US in sunscreens, and these are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So both chemicals and minerals are very effective at broad spectrum coverage, meaning they protect against UVA and UVB rays. So what do I recommend? Chemical or mineral? Here Here's the deal. Chemical sunscreens have the most controversy surrounding them for four main reasons that is alarming to the public. First, there is evidence from a study published in JAMA, which is a major medical journal, that chemicals in sunscreens, specifically oxybenzone, is absorbed into the blood in high quantities when applied to the skin for sun protection. So this finding was very alarming for the public and it stirred up a lot of controversy. The problem with this isolated finding is that we don't know the true significance of this finding. Yes, it is found in the blood, but does its brief presence there cause any harmful long-term effects? We need more research to really understand the full picture here, but nonetheless, these findings have really reinvigorated a war on sunscreen, especially chemical sunscreens. Second, the oxybenzone chemical that is found in so many sunscreens is thought by some to be an endocrine disruptor, which means it affects the hormones in our bodies. This claim came about from studies done in lab settings. We need further studies to fully understand and to clarify its association with hormone disruption in children and adults. But until then, it remains approved for use in many products, but this unsubstantiated effect in human subjects with topical use is enough to make some people wary about its use. So rather than wait for confirmatory studies, people are rejecting its use altogether now as a better safe than sorry approach, and that's totally fine. I get that. Third, chemicals and sunscreens have been known to cause allergic reactions, so many people find that they break out into a rash when they use a sunscreen. There are many ingredients that are commonly found in sunscreens that may be the culprit for the rash, but the chemical sunblockers are on the top of the list for the most frequent offenders. For that reason, many people will avoid chemical sunscreens and instead opt for mineral ones, which have less chance of causing rashes on the skin. And fourth, there is some controversy about oxybenzone destroying coral reefs. So you will see a new marketing push of reef safe sunscreens that are formulated without this chemical. So for all of those reasons, chemical sunscreens are controversial and leads many people to refuse fuse them all together and opt for only physical or mineral sunscreens. So mineral sunblocks, like I mentioned, sit on top of the skin. They have only inorganic, non-absorptive blockers in them that aren't likely to be absorbed in the bloodstream in the same way the chemicals are. And these minerals are far less likely to cause rashes on the skin. So far, it seems like mineral sunscreens are a slam dunk. Why do chemical sunscreens even exist? It's because of the cosmetic appeal of the chemical sunscreens. So these chemical sunscreens are way more user-friendly, as I like to say. So they rub in more easily. They can also be removed in the shower more easily. They can blend into the skin more easily, be worn under makeup, and in general are great at blocking the sun. Now, mineral blockers are notorious for leaving that white cast look on the skin. They are harder to rub in and to remove, and they can can be tough to wear under makeup for some people. So newer technology has helped improve this and also some brands will add a tint or a color to their sunscreen to help decrease this white cast to some extent. So it really just comes down to a pro versus con situation in choosing the sunscreen that's right for you and it's a personal decision. So what do I use? I stick to mineral sunscreens as much as possible and I recommend mineral sunscreens exclusively for babies in children, as well as pregnant and nursing mothers, as these chemicals have been found in mother's breast milk, amniotic fluid, etc. So those groups should definitely stick to mineral sunscreen options. Now, Neutrogena offers both types of sunscreen, chemical and mineral, but they have far more chemical options. Now, of all the types of chemicals that are used in sunscreen, oxybenzone, like I mentioned, is really the most controversial and problematic one. So many newer chemical sunscreens are being formulated without oxybenzone. So back to our categories of sunscreen from Neutrogena, we have the lotions, spray, and sticks. And then within these categories, there are two main subcategories 
chemical versus mineral. And within the chemical category, I break it down even further into those that contain oxybenzone and those that do not contain oxybenzone. And I will make this distinction for all the reasons I listed above about oxybenzone being controversial. So this way, if you want a chemical sunscreen, you will be able to safely pick one free of oxybenzone. And of course, the mineral category does not include that division because there's only minerals in them, no chemicals included. And the last division under the categories that I make is fragrance. Yes, many sunscreens contain fragrance, which is another very controversial ingredient. And it's an important ingredient to be aware of if you have sensitive or eczema prone skin or a history of rashes from skincare products. In that case, you will want to choose a fragrance-free product. So I make this distinction to help you further narrow down your options and select the best one for your skin. So those are the categories I use to break it down among the 52 options and come up with the very select few that I will actually recommend. Lotions versus spray versus stick. Under that, you're gonna have a division into chemical or mineral. Chemical is further divided into that with oxybenzone, that without oxybenzone, and that's further divided into those with fragrance and without fragrance. Now the mineral category is lastly divided into those with and without fragrance. So each of the 52 products fits into one of these categories. What you will find when you are looking at Neutrogena sunscreens is that they have multiple different product lines and then many options within those lines. For example, they have a Hydro Boost sunscreen line, an Ultra Sheer line, the Beach Defense line, on and on. The interesting thing about these different lines is that for many of these options, the formulations are nearly identical it's just the packaging and marketing that makes them stand apart. So in situations like this, all of these options and packaging differences exist to convince you, the consumer, that you need to buy multiple products for multiple different scenarios in your life. One sunscreen for everyday use, one for the beach, one for swimming, one for your baby, one for your older child. Buy more, more, more. This is so false. And I hope by the end of this video, you will understand why this is just not true a little bit better. So I'm gonna go by product line here, discuss each line, and put them into the categories I mentioned. I'll discuss a few other key points I discovered about these in terms of notable ingredients as well as their cosmetic appeal. Let's start with the ever popular Hydro Boost sunscreen line. There are two sunscreens in this line, SPF 30 and SPF 50 options. These are chemical sunscreens containing oxybenzone and fragrance. So literally this sunscreen falls into the most problematic or controversial category right off the bat. That's the first thing I noticed. All right, let's look at the packaging. Water gel formulation, invisible finish, non-greasy. Sounds good, right? Here's the issue. On the ingredients label, the third most abundant ingredient is denatured alcohol. This is not a great ingredient to have in a skincare product because it is super drying. It is a drying alcohol. It's not a moisturizing alcohol like fatty alcohols can be. For products that claim to be fast drying, weightless or lightweight, that's a red flag for possibly containing alcohol in the product. So always check the ingredient label for that. I typically do not recommend skincare products that contain denatured alcohol because it's damaging to the skin barrier of absolutely all skin types and it causes irritation. If you use it sparingly or inconsistently, it's probably fine, but sunscreens should be used abundantly and consistently, so I do not like it in sunscreens. So Hydro Boost line, I do not recommend either of these options. The next line is the Age Shield line. Marketing here on this product is really trying to stand out for those looking for heavy sun protection who are really concerned about the aging effects of the sun. Now, there are two options, an SPF 110 and SPF 70. Both of these are chemical oxybenzone containing sunscreen with fragrance. So into that category it goes. My big red flag, in addition to it being in this problematic category, is that it contains methyl isothiazolinone, or MI for short. Now, MI is a preservative that is a common cause of rashes known as allergic contact dermatitis. In fact, it's such a common offender that the American Contact Dermatitis Society named MI the contact allergen of the year in 2013. You can find it in so many skincare products, face wipes, baby wipes, and sunscreens. I do not recommend this product because of the MI, 
oxybenzone, and the fragrance. There are plenty of options out there and you don't need an SPF of 110 to effectively protect yourself against sun damage. Okay, next, the clear face, clear body line. We are getting some good news here, guys. This is marketed towards those with acne, concerns about breaking out or rashes to sunscreen. There are three options here, the Clear Face SPF 30, Clear Face SPF 55, and Clear Body SPF 30. They are all water resistant, 80 minutes, and they are all fragrance free, which is amazing. So these are all chemical sunscreens, but the good news here is that both of the SPF 30 options are oxybenzone free, but the SPF 55 option does have oxybenzone, so beware of that. So I consider the Clear Face SPF 30 and Clear Body SPF 30 great sunscreen options and I highly recommend. Next, the very popular Ultra Sheer sunscreen line. There are many options within this line, 13 to be exact, and these contain lotions, sprays, and sticks. So here's the deal with this line. They are all chemical sunscreens. Some have oxybenzone while the rest are oxybenzone free and all 13 contain fragrance. They are all water resistant up to 80 minutes. Now for the lotions, there are options with varying SPFs, including SPF 30, 45, 55, 70 for the face and the body, 85 and 100 plus. I don't know why there needs to be so many SPF options for this product. The ultra sheer options that contain oxybenzone are the lotions with the higher SPF, and that's because oxybenzone is a very effective UVB blocker, so to get that really high SPF rating, it's easier to formulate products with oxybenzone. So the SPF 70, 85, and 100 plus products are all oxybenzone containing products with fragrance. The SPF 30, 45, and 55 options are all oxybenzone free products, but they still have fragrance. So now we finally have some of these products that are in a new, less problematic category here. Now, ultra sheer spray sunscreen options. Those with oxybenzone and fragrance are the ultra sheer mist SPF 70 and SPF 100 plus. Those without oxybenzone are the ultra sheer mist 30, 45, and the Ultra Sheer Face Mist SPF 55. And lastly, there is one stick option in this line, and it does include both oxybenzone and fragrance, and that's the Ultra Sheer Stick SPF 70. Note that the SPF 70, 85, and 100 all contain MI, that preservative that I mentioned earlier, and several of the sprays contain denatured alcohol, which again is very drying and damaging to the skin barrier. So my overall recommendation here, if you want to use the Ultra Sheer line, opt for ones that have the SPF between 30 to 55 in lotion form and avoid the others which have oxybenzone and MI preservative, but know that all of these will still contain fragrance. Now the mineral counterpart to the Ultra Sheer line is the Sheer Zinc line. I'm excited to talk to you guys about this line because I really like it. Often you'll see the Ultra Sheer placed next to the Sheer Zinc option on the shelf and they seem so similar, it's really hard to know what is the difference. So let me explain. The Sheer Zinc line is a 100% mineral sunscreen, no chemicals in it at all. There are six products in this line, two of which are marketed to kids. All are fragrance free, which is fabulous. There are lotion options from SPF 30 to SPF 50. One is specifically marketed for the face as SPF 50, and this has colloidal oatmeal in it. And the lotions have zinc percentages from 18 to over 21% as a sole active ingredient. So this is a very effective broad spectrum blocker. This is just about the highest zinc level that you will find in sunscreen. Now the sheer zinc stick is also 100% mineral, fragrance free. Of note, an ingredient in the stick form only only is isopropyl myristate, which might be comedogenic or pore clogging in some people. This is true of sunscreen sticks in general. They tend to be thicker and have a different texture, so they spread over the skin differently. So they may be pore clogging for some people, so keep that in mind. Now there are two kid options, both SPF 50, one lotion and one stick. These ingredients are almost identical to the non-kid forms or the adult forms of these. So perhaps they are slightly different concentrations, but we don't know that because this info is 
not disclosed, but regardless, you don't need the kid one for your kid. The regular one will be fine for the whole family, vice versa. If all you can find is the kid option, that's gonna be fine to use on the whole family as well. Both are safe, they're basically equivalent. So what you will notice in comparing the sheer zinc to the ultra sheer version is that the sheer zinc will be more likely to leave a white cast on your skin, which may be problematic for darker skin tones. It's a bit more difficult to spread and remove from the skin, but if you are using a body cleansing oil, you won't have much of an issue getting this off. I will link below the body cleansing oils that I highly recommend. Overall, I definitely recommend the Sheer Zinc line. It has safe ingredients. Of all the Neutrogena sunscreen options, this one will be the least likely to irritate the skin. So it's really preferred in eczema prone, sensitive skin patients, and a single product will be safe for the entire family. So next up, Neutrogena has two kind of sport or water lines, the beach defense line and the cool dry sport line. So I'll talk about both of these now and compare them for you. Now the beach defense line, the one in the yellow bottle, these look like they're marketed for outdoor water use, vacation, exactly like it says. Something notable here is that you get over twice the quantity of sunscreen for the same price as the ultra sheer line, just something interesting. Also it's lightweight non-greasy feel. It is water resistant up to 80 minutes. Now, all of the Neutrogena sunscreens I mentioned so far say that they are water resistant. So you don't necessarily need this specific product if you're going to be in the water. The others should be just as effective. So the Beach Defense line are chemical sunscreens. They are both oxybenzone free and oxybenzone containing options, and all of them will have fragrance. Now, fragrance is listed as the last ingredient. So that does mean it's in a very low concentration in this product. So probably not a huge concern for most people. So Beach Defense 30 and 50 are oxybenzone free, but the higher SPF version, SPF 70, does contain oxybenzone. Same thing with the sprays, the SPF 30 and 50 are oxybenzone free, the 70 and 100 are ones that contain oxybenzone. There is one stick form and it's actually oxybenzone free, so that's a great option from this line. So let's compare that to the Cool Dry Sport line, which is in the blue bottle, which again is a greater quantity for the same price compared to the Ultra Sheer line. So these say sweat and water resistant. They also hail their micro mesh technology so that sweat cuts through without the sunscreen sliding off the skin. Now these are all chemical products with fragrance, but like the Beach Defense line, the fragrance is listed very last, so probably it's just in a small quantity. So all of the lotion forms contain oxybenzone, SPF 30, 50, and 70, but the spray forms have both options. The 30 and 50 are oxybenzone free, and the SPF 70 and 100 do have oxybenzone in them. Now the Cool Dry Sport has one stick, and it does does have oxybenzone in it, so I don't recommend that one. Instead, choose the oxybenzone free Beach Defense Stick if you want a stick form. So between these two lines, I lean towards the Beach Defense line as it has oxybenzone free options in both lotion and stick form, which are more effective than the sprays. And it's the most affordable of these two options. There is also a sunscreen on the site called Sport Face, listed as sweat and water resistant, won't clog pores. It does have oxybenzone in it, it has MI, the preservative in it, and it has parabens. So this might be a problem for some people. There is not fragrance listed specifically on the list, but it might have other ingredients added in as masking fragrance. So just be aware of that. I don't recommend this product for all of those reasons. Next, we have the Sensitive Skin line. There's one for the face and one general one for the whole body. These both are 100% mineral, no chemicals and no fragrances. So these go in the mineral lotion category. Now the Sensitive Skin face is lightweight, you can apply it nicely under makeup. It has a low percentage of zinc and titanium dioxide in it compared to the sheer zinc face line. So this will have a little bit less of a white cast in general, but they're both SPF 50, so that's great. No fragrance in these products, no irritating ingredients to mention. So this is a very good option and one that I will recommend. And the Sensitive Skin 60 Plus Lotion also 100% mineral, low percent zinc and titanium dioxide, fragrance free, but it has MI in it. And that's a real red flag for me. So for that reason, I will not recommend this one over the sheer zinc option. I will now end with the baby and kids options. So first, the pure and free baby. It comes in the pink bottle, comes in lotion and stick form. The lotion is SPF 70, 100% mineral, no chemicals, no fragrance. 
I want to point out that the ingredient list is nearly identical, if not completely identical, to the sheer zinc option. So again, you don't need to specifically buy this tube for your baby and a separate one for adults or older kids. It's all the same formulation, just different packaging and different marketing strategies here. So because this one is the same as the sheer zinc, which I love, I recommend this product as well, with the caveat that you just need to buy one option, one or the other. Okay, the pure and free stick form is SPF 60. It has a lower percent zinc and titanium dioxide in it compared to the sheer zinc stick. So that means it will be slightly less white and maybe just a little bit easier to rub it in. Note that unlike the lotion form, the stick is not equivalent to the sheer zinc stick. This pure and free stick is much smaller, has less percent actives in it, and it does not contain isopropyl mirror state like the sheer zinc does. I like this product and I will recommend this one as well. And lastly, we have the wet skin line. These come in both Wet Skin and Wet Skin Kids sprays in one stick form called Wet Skin Kids. This is all about marketing here. So presumably if you apply this to wet skin, it stays put and you don't need to bother with drying off, etc. These all contain chemicals and they all contain oxybenzone. Even the one marketed for kids, all of these contain fragrance. The Wet Skin Kids ingredient list is nearly identical to the adult form. I do not recommend this product line. If you want a safe stick for kids, choose the sheer zinc option or the pure and free baby options as those are chemical and oxybenzone free and they are fragrance free. And that's it. That's all 52 sunscreens categorized and scrutinized. So let's summarize a few that I actually recommended and a few tips to keep in mind. All of the mineral lotion options I recommended except the Sensitive Skin 60 Plus because of that MI in the ingredient list. So that means I recommend the Sheer Zinc line, both the lotion and stick form, adult or kids options, they're nearly identical, you don't need both. I recommended the Sensitive Skin Face option, great for daily use, under makeup. I recommended the Pure and Free Baby line, both the stick and the lotion. Neutrogena does not offer any mineral spray options and I generally don't recommend sprays anyways. So those are my very top Neutrogena favorites. Now, if you really don't like mineral sunscreens for whatever reason, maybe the white cast just doesn't work for your skin, here are my top picks for chemical options. I recommended the Clear Face SPF 30, not the 55 as that has oxybenzone in it, and the Clear Body SPF 30. Now these are both oxybenzone free and fragrance free and therefore they're my top picks. These are the only chemical oxybenzone free options that also don't contain fragrance. There are no chemical sprays that are both oxybenzone oxybenzone free and fragrance free. There are a few options for sprays that are oxybenzone free, but they still have fragrance. So if you must get a spray, choose one of those. Those were the Ultra Sheer Mist SPF 30 or 45, the Ultra Sheer Face Mist SPF 55, the Beach Defense Spray SPF 30 or 50, or the Cool Dry Sport SPF 30 or 50. As for the chemical sticks, there's only one option that I recommend. Again, only if you must use the chemical instead of mineral sticks that I prefer. So the Beach Defense SPF 50 is the only stick option that is oxybenzone free. However, it does have fragrance, but only in that very small amount. And that's it, those are my top picks. And a few tips to keep in mind when shopping, you do not need products marketed for babies or kids if you are choosing a safe sunscreen option for yourself that's mineral-based and fragrance-free. That should be safe for babies as well as kids. Alternatively, an appropriate baby or kid sunscreen is also safe to use for adults because the ingredient list is often identical. A note about water-resistant products, all of the Neutrogena options I mentioned are water resistant and they will say so on the front of their package. So you don't necessarily need a beach option as the others should suffice. And lastly, I prefer lotions and sticks instead of sprays with the caveat to be careful with stick forms of sunscreen if you are acne prone as these can worsen or flare acne. Overall, I love and appreciate Neutrogena brand because it is so affordable and accessible. These sunscreen options have great ingredients at the most affordable and competitive prices. As always, I linked all the products below that I discussed today within the categories I placed them and I pulled out my favorites and linked those below as well. So check them out. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any videos. Give them a thumbs up and comment below. And as always, come find me on some of my other social media accounts, which I linked below. Let me know what topic you guys want me to talk about next. See you guys soon.